it's time to talk about winterization version 3 I, I, I'm just gonna wrap up what I've done over the last three days all the hives have been condensed to their final size they all have a fresh gallon of syrup I did the mite check on Balboa yesterday and that hive had 11 mites in one alcohol wash so if I have mites in that hive with all this robin that's been going on they, they're all gonna have some mites so I'm doing apivar this year I'm gonna look into something else next year possibly oxalic acid just to mix it up but most of these hives have never had apivar I've used it twice before but I, th I don't think it's gonna be a problem using it two years in a row so apivar feeding and condensing the hives that was uh, sort of plan a step step zero on winterization this week coming up it's gonna warm up they're gonna take all that syrup in hopefully have you know some warm days to fly gets more pollen in the hive there's definitely pollen out here but there's not a lot of nectar so I'll feed them again uh, and just keep feeding them until they stop taking the food and then we're gonna be wrapping so All right, so I'm going into my third winter with bees. First winter, I wrap my hives with tar paper, I put foam shells around them, and I used the Vivaldi boards. I went in the winter with two hives and one nuke. The nuke was very weak, I didn't expect it to live. One hive made it, one hive didn't. The hive that didn't make it had a varroa problem, so that's pretty much what happened. The hive that made it was Balboa, and she survived with the tar paper, the foam wraps, and the Vivaldi boards. Winter number two, which was last winter, I went into the winter with three hives, two Russians and Balboa. One of the Russians died and that hive also had a Varroa problem. So that's kind of why that hive died. The other two hives did survive. They had tar paper wraps, Vivaldi boards, foam shells, and then I added last year the solar wall windbreak behind the hives. Um, I don't know exactly how much the solar gain was during the middle of the winter, but it definitely added a lot of windbreak to the, to the system, and I think that helped a lot. The other thing I did last year for the first time was have all these trees. It was sort of like a double windbreak going on there, so that really helped. So the two things that we worry about most here in Massachusetts are moisture and cold. Now I know you're saying, but cold doesn't kill bees. I hear this all the time. Cold doesn't kill bees, moisture kills bees. Cold can definitely kill bees. Picture a beehive with a cluster of bees hanging out over here on some food. You have an extended cold snap, like say a month of cold weather below 30 degrees when they're clustered over here on this side of the hive. And they don't break cluster or they can't break cluster to go over on the other side of the hive to get to where the food is. They're going to starve over here and I've seen this on a couple of my hives. The cluster dies and there's food one frame over. They just didn't get to it because they were they were clustered. They couldn't break cluster. So the cold was a factor. In a perfect situation the cluster is, is clustered. They warm up during the day enough so that they can move around the hive, reorient themselves and, and find the food and then recluster. But here we have months that go by, a month will go by where the temperature does not get above 30 degrees and they, they can't break cluster. So I insulate my hives. People say you don't have to, you don't have to. They're your bees, you can do whatever you want. I insulate my hives. Okay, so let's talk about the crux of my moisture management and that is the Vivaldi board. I've been using these since my very first winter. So a Vivaldi board is basically an inner cover it's got your plywood like an inner cover. You've got your opening like an inner cover. You got your B space built in here. You got your upper entrance opening here when this sits on the top box. But then the, the Vivaldi board has this extended like two and a half inch tall lip here with ventilation on both ends of the board. Now the theory behind this is that this sits on top of your hive. The bees are gonna generate moisture and heat when they're in their cluster inside the hive. The warm air is gonna go up to the highest point in the hive because hot air rises. It's gonna go up through this hole and go up into this area. Now inside this area, I put burlap. Burlap is light and airy, but it does absorb moisture. 
I don't like putting wood chips up here or, or shavings or anything like that because they're heavy, they get soaked, and then they never dry out. This will wick moisture up, and then the ventilation here will dry it out. So this actually dries as it gets wet. So this is a uh, wicking material, but it's also sort of a wind buffer. It's gonna stop the, that flow of hot air from just blasting up through and out of the hive. It's, it's not so much like a warming blanket, but it does block the, the flow of the air. Uh, it also is gonna keep wind from blowing in here and like taking the warmth out of the hive. The Vivaldi boards were originally designed to have a feeding station up here. There's a part that goes here that covers this area where you're supposed to put food. I don't do that anymore. This year I just made these little screens and I'm gonna keep the bees down in the hive. Burlap goes on top. This is purely a moisture management uh, situation here. I'm not feeding up here. I'm going to feed below the Vivaldi board right on top of the frames. I'm gonna show you that in the hives. So my first year I bought a couple of Vivaldi boards. Last year I built two Vivaldi boards. And then this year I have 12 hives and I didn't feel like buying or building 12 Vivaldi boards. However, this summer I made a bunch of these things. These are like ventilation shims. I put these on top of the inner cover of the hives so that warm air could come out of the hives and ventilate out of the hive. The lid was right on top here. And this just gave the, the hive kind of a vented roof area, attic of the hive. And then I realized all my hives already have inner covers. I made these things. They sit right on here. And look at that. It's a Vivaldi board. So you don't have to buy a Vivaldi board. You don't even have to make a Vivaldi board. You can just make a box, a four-sided box, drill some holes, add some screen material in there, place it on your inner cover. Your inner cover goes upside down, so you have the, the upper entrance here. Then I just block off my hole right here, burlap up top, and that is essentially a moisture wicking vented sort of attic for your winter beehive. This is what I'm doing on all my hives this year. All right, so after the moisture is dealt with in the hive, the next step is dealing with the cold and the wind. We, we live up on a hill here. This bee yard is exposed, and to deal with the wind, we put the shrubs around the bee yard, which, which are doing a fantastic job. They're growing very well. It's just arborvitaes, nothing special, but they're filling in nicely, and they are blocking a lot of wind as it comes across the field. The other thing, I am gonna re, uh, reinstall the solar reflective wall behind the hives to give a little bit more sunlight on the hives, but also just to block that, that north wind as it, as it comes toward the hives. So then the other thing I did for wind protection was adding tar paper, which is sort of standard beekeeping practice all around. Up here, a lot of people do it, and I know it's, it's just done all over the world. I don't like tar paper for a lot of reasons. It's a pain in the butt to apply, and it's also, when you take it off in the springtime, it creates a ton of waste, because you can't really save that stuff. You can try and reuse it again, but it, as it comes off, it's, it's dissolved, it's just junk, and then has to go in, in the landfill, and it's just a bad waste. This year I have 12 hives to wrap, and I was not looking forward to doing that. So I found a better way. This is a new solution. This is totally clean. It doesn't create any waste. You don't have to throw anything away. This is all completely reusable year after year after year. And the ease of use putting these things on is a hundred times easier. So what this is, is black Coroplast hive sleeves. So this is just, corrugated plastic. It's basically cardboard, but it's made of plastic instead of paper. So it's totally reusable. This will not degrade in the sun. Uh, it, can, it can stand out in the elements. It's actually raining right now, so it's waterproof and really easy to work with. So all I did was get a sheet of this stuff. I cut it up, folded it. The uh, end is attached with Gorilla Tape. This is waterproof tape. And then I just cut out my openings. Upper entrance, Vivaldi board, breathing hole, and then a flap at the bottom for my, my lower entrance. And the great thing about these is they slide right on. In the springtime, they're gonna slide right off, and then fold flat and stack up in the garage when I'm not using them. So it's just a fantastic solution. This is not my idea. I don't wanna take credit for this. There's a guy in Ontario that makes these. 
he makes them sort of locally, and I know you can order them if you're in Ontario, but uh, there's no one around here that makes these. So I just figured it out. I went and found the black coroplast, cut it, folded it, taped it. You know, there's no secrets here. This is, this is very simple to do. So if you can find this stuff, you're going to be happy. This is uh, very exciting. All right, let's go put this stuff on and winterize the bees. All right, so this is the full treatment here. We take off the inner cover. It's a great looking hive. So they're gonna get a feeding shim here, which is just a three quarter inch shim. To build them up a little bit. Then paper. Some sugar. Again, this is for absorbing moisture, but also just a little bit of snack food, emergency food. Probably not necessary right now, but again, I'm thinking moisture. They can do what they want with that. Then we put on our inner cover again, upside down so that we have an entrance up top here. Don't forget that shim or the inner cover won't fit. And I'm going to close their hole here, but leave the vent so air and hot air and moisture can come up. Our vent, our wick. What I've learned I need to do is cut the top off here because the covers are not fitting around this. The cover won't cover over this, so I gotta cut the sides off here. All right, and then we cover it up. Upper entrance, vent holes, lower entrance, Fully wrapped on the sides. Nice wind buffer. All right, we're raining. I gotta stop the, the video. We've got a bit of an October storm heading this way, but there's the final pan of the bee yard. 12 hives wrapped and Vivaldi boarded. And this is why I have awnings. Here comes the rain. Well, we did have to run away from the at the end of the winterization video, but look what happened after that storm. And look where the rainbow ends. Right at the bee yard. Cool.